Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. My kitchen is a mess. <laughs> I almost shot this on the porch because my kitchen is a complete mess. I'm sitting in the middle of it and there's just, there's so much happening, y'all. I'm thinking I'm gonna clean it up as I need to do things in here today. So that's what's going on primarily. I want to get these onions pickled. I've got a fantastic recipe for English pub style onions. I've never used malt vinegar before, so I'm looking forward to testing that out. Um, and I have these lovely tomatoes that came out of the garden. I wanna score and core these and get them down to the freezer downstairs so that when we've got a whole bunch of tomatoes, um, we can go ahead and process those. If your garden is anything like mine, nothing ripens all at the same time. There is no giant haul harvest of any one thing. It's a handful of this, a handful of that, a few blushing tomatoes that are ready to ripen up in the window sill before the bugs get them. Um, and that's just how it is. So almost always, whenever I do a harvest, it's in anticipation of the next one or the one after that to have enough to process anything with. And so typically that's what's happening this summer. So let's talk about those pocket harvests, huh? Um, so today it's gonna be tomatoes. Over June and July, it was peas. And look at this, one handful at a time, we brought in these peas and now there's a, a half gallon of them. So not bad for the front end of summer, huh? We'll see about doing peas at the end of the season as well. Um, I didn't realize you could do them at the end of the season, so I might give that a shot. I just had so much fun with these. Out here in zone 6B, we still have about eight more weeks of the growing season, so I'd like to maximize that as much as possible. I've never done multiple planting into fall, so this is new for me and it's super exciting and I'm really looking forward to it. But today it's about pickling up these onions and getting these tomatoes ready to go into the freezer. So let's get those tomatoes cored and scored and into a bag for the freezer where they will await the rest of the harvest ripening up with them and we can make some great stuff out of them. Coring and scoring is pretty easy. Um, you see the, the little spot where it was connected to the stem before? We're gonna just cut that out with a paring knife and then I'm gonna cut an X into the bottom. And the idea is that when it's time to process these tomatoes, what we're gonna do is just simply defrost them. And then because we've pulled out the core and cut an X on the bottom, as they defrost, it's gonna make those skins just easy to slip right off. So let's get these ready. This one's a little blemished, so I'm just gonna cut the edge off. And I'm even gonna do this with my cherries. Bag, just you know fill the bottom of our two and a half gallon bag and I'm just gonna keep adding to it as I've got ripe tomatoes I'm waiting on the Costaludos to get ripe because I am just aching to make a tomato sandwich with one of those but I'm watching them they're taking their time that's okay I can wait I'm a patient woman <laughs> all right I'm gonna get these into the freezer and the next thing I want to do today is pick up these onions so I'm gonna take these onto the porch where there's lots and lots of air and I'm gonna peel them. I had thought about doing a blanch peeling with them, but because I wanna keep them as crispy as possible and they are gonna sit with salt in my kitchen for about four to six hours, I'm just gonna peel them by hand. Um, these guys, they just, 
really, they don't look that difficult to peel. So I'm gonna get in on that. Maybe some of these tiny ones are gonna be. See, I feel like if I did the blanch and peel on these guys that I'm just not gonna have very much onion left. I'm just gonna peel these cold and uh, get on top of that. So if you need me, I'll be on the porch. <laughs> See you in a little bit. Our onions are salted. I've got about two-ish pounds of onions in the bowl. I sprinkled in a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt, and we're just gonna let this sit. I'm gonna set a timer for four hours, and when we come back, we're gonna get our pickle on. So here are my lovely peeled onions. They have been sitting in the sink with their teaspoon and a half of salt for roughly four hours. I'm gonna let them sit for a little while longer. I'm waiting for the water to come up to temp in the canner. I've got these adorable little squat pint jars left over from last year and I thought these would be just perfect. Um, so I'm gonna pop those into the canner so by the time it's up to temp, these are sterilized, hot, and ready to fill. All right, our pot is on standby. Our jars are sterilized and still warm for a little bit. Let's make a brine. I'm using a recipe today from the Culinary Ginger. I'll link to it down below in the description. Um, the only difference is I have doubled mine. So, cause I looked at this, it calls for two cups of malt vinegar and I was thinking, mm, this doesn't feel quite like enough brine. So I wanted to double it just in case. Watch, I will totally wind up with extra liquid, right? Anyway, so with doubling her recipe, I'm gonna be using four cups of malt vinegar as the base. I'm gonna be adding to that a cup and a half of plain granulated sugar. Then we have black pepper, mustard seed, and allspice seed, as well as some ground ginger. And we'll be adding some bay leaves as well. I'm also going to deviate one other way from her recipe. Everybody's talking about how if you process these, if you water bath process these, they're gonna be not as crisp as you would like. I've had pickled onion in my pickles from last year and the pickle crisp from ball made a huge difference. So I am gonna add a quarter teaspoon of pickle crisp to each of my squat pint jars. I have the heat on medium high right now and we're just gonna whisk the sugar in. And I'm also gonna add in the ginger. Those are our mustard seeds, our coriander seeds, our black peppercorns, and our bay leaves. So this recipe says to just heat it until the sugar dissolves. Um, but I'm not entirely comfortable with that. I'm gonna let this come to temp and simmer uh, four or five minutes. Fun fact, when I was trying to decide how many 
pint jars I was gonna bring up, I packed the onions, which I had not peeled yet, into jars and I brought up four jars because I had enough onions to fill four jars. Well, I peeled said onions and now I have three jars worth of onions. So count on a little bit of shrinkage going on when you peel your onions. So I have a little bit of brine left over. It's not an entire batch worth left over. It looks like had I had four, I would have had like a half a cup of brine left over. So I'm glad I did double that. Oh my God. And I do this every time. I almost forgot to add the pickle crisp. I'm gonna put a quarter teaspoon of the pickle crisp into each of these. And just heads up, I'm not shilling pickle crisp. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just really liked using it last year when I made pickles. Okay. I have left these a quarter, a three quarter inch head space. So I may have to add a little extra brine in here. Just getting my bubbles out. I'm just using plain white vinegar on my handy dandy paper towel. Jars are in the canner and I'm gonna set a timer. I'll see you back here in 20 minutes. That's our timer. Our jars have been in the canner for 20 minutes, so let's get them out of there. I heard one go plink as I was pulling them out, so that's a good sign. Ah, now onto the hardest part. We've got to wait three weeks to find out what these taste like. So we'll have to we'll have to get back together and find out how the science went. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna let these cool on my counter for 24 hours and then take the rings off, hold them by the top and make sure that everybody's sealed and then mark them with a date so we know when we're gonna get back into those. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while we did our very first pickles of the season. Who knew they would be onions? I wouldn't have guessed in a million years, but there you have it. I will catch you up soon. Take care.